What are your thoughts about the uh, disciplinary mechanisms that exist within, uh, say, the judiciary, yes, to see how they can reduce this to the barest minimum, if not completely deal with it? You mean the disciplinary measures that are already inherent in the institutional framework mm -hmm. we have right now? Yes. Is it working? Okay. Uh, well, it should be working. <laughs> you know, most of the times uh, I hear people like talk about how uh, we need to get this done, we need to change the system, we need to do this, we need to do that. It's not as if this, these things are not existent. They are in existence, but it's the implementation that becomes a whole lot of problem most of the time. And the will to implement it becomes a problem as well. And, and yesterday I was having a discussion with a friend of mine, and, and I was telling him uh, that a chief justice of Nigeria is like um, a Senate president. Yeah, all right? He's not an administrative officer in the sense that he's an administrative officer. They are just presiding officers. He's one among equals. And he has only one vote in case there's uh, five justices sitting in the case or seven justices in case of any interpretation of uh, the Constitution. But you have this, this culture, like you said, about people in position, they have, like, they are alpha and the omegas, they can make Omar. Now, the chief justice of Nigeria, for example, or chief judge of any state, happens to be the, the head of the State Judicial Council or the National Judicial Council, respectively. Uh, uh, and there are other members, up to, I think, about 23 or 24 members in the case of the National Judicial Council. They are usually the disciplinary body, constitutionally, you know, recognized disciplinary body of, um, of, uh, of the judiciary. So you get a petition written about a judge or any judicial officer, and then you send it to the National Judicial Council, and they sit and deliberate on it, like we saw in, in the case of Salami, uh, the former president of the Court of Appeal. Uh, and I think, I would like to think, I've never been part of them, but I would love to think that, you know, at the end of the day, these things are going to be subjected to vote, uh, either to go one way or another. So if there is this willingness in them, and, uh, and this, this tilth willingness to deal with corruption or whatever kind of recklessness they find out in the, uh, in the judicial system, I think they can do it. And in most cases, they have. In most Fine. cases, they have. But uh, is it enough? I don't know about that. Okay, perhaps uh, you should tell us if you know uh, about this. Uh, you just talk about judges, uh, you know, listening to the highest bidder uh, when it comes to delivering judgment, especially when it, it has to do with uh, some uh, uh, political matters. Uh, uh, how true is that? First of all, I'm a politician and I'm a lawyer. And so that, that, that puts me at a crossroad of, this, of, this, of your question. Uh, you can buy a judgment, but you can never buy justice. That is for certain. Uh, I don't know. I don't have any direct evidence of, of any pure judicial corruption where a judge accepts money. But sometimes you see some judgments that are coming out from some banned justices and you wonder how on earth they were able to reach this judgment. You know, we are a religious country. That is, when I say we're a religious country, I mean... Everybody believes in God. And anybody that believes in God ultimately believes that he's the master of all judges. But even he, God himself, cannot tell you that his judgment is unpredictable. In Nigeria, they tell you, you go to court, you don't know what, is the, what the judgment is going to be. To me, that is recklessness. To me, that is injustice. Because there are laid down procedure and rules. And if you follow them, and if you know your case is aligned with the positivity of the law, then you should be able to appreciably expect a certain judgment to come this way or that way, depending on what the, the judicial precedent that is in existence, and the laid down rules and regulations that uh, the procedural law and the substantive law in itself. Now, when you have 
a situation where you go to court and you cannot reasonably predict what the judgment is going to be. And then the judgment comes in absolute contradiction to what is obtainable ordinarily in the course of justice, then you begin to wonder if something has gone amiss somewhere. So to go back to your question, do poli have politicians intensify this uh, allegation of bribery and corruption judiciary? I would have to agree and say yes, there have been bizarre judgments that have come out from some courts in this country, uh, especially in political matters. And that gives you a pause and you wonder if something has gone wrong. But uh, I don't know. In, in law, it's, it doesn't matter what you, what you know. It only matters what you can prove. By the way, the way it is now uh, with uh, the EFCC coming into the picture now, do you think that the uh, anti grafter agency can actually fix this uh, supposed rot in the judiciary? You know, I've, I, I was listening to your program yesterday, and and I, one of the one of the learned senior lawyers that you had in your program was saying um, that um, judges are humans and they are not superhumans. Well, maybe they are not superhumans, but they should be super Nigerians. That is certainly true, because when you apply to be a judge then the threshold of your moral rectitude should be higher than that of normal individuals. So just because the society is corrupt doesn't mean the judges must be corrupt. It doesn't necessarily follow. There's a reason why you are called honorable justice. There's a reason why there, there's that prefix before your name. Because you are supposed to be honorable first and foremost, above the normal threshold of, uh, of ordinary people, and then you are justice. You are supposed to apply, you know, the the moral aspect of it and see it from the legal point of view and from the moral point of view, combine it together and deliver what is purely known as justice. So if you have the powers to decide what is right or wrong among a society and there's a willful a willful surrender to your final decision, then you should be above board. You should be a super Nigerian by all definition. That is one. Uh, two, I see um, a, a, any society can survive any kind of corrupt system with the exception of judiciary. A society can survive a corrupt police force or a weak military or corrupt bureaucracy or corrupt civil service, but no society none whatsoever can survive a corrupt judiciary. Because if you get miffed or you get cheated by any of these organizations, be it the police, the politicians or whatever, your last bus stop should be the judge. And if the judge is corrupt himself, where do you go to? So if EFCC starts this investigation, it's good. Maybe they should search their beam light on these people. But at the end of the day, EFCC cannot prosecute on their own. They will have, still have to go back to the same judges and present it before the court. So EFCC alone can do it. Maybe they can initiate the process. But at the end of the day, uh, it, 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 it boils down to the person and, and to the process of uh, recruitment of judges. All right, but if the bar were to put their foot down saying, well, uh, we've had it up to here, we have to do something about this, how much of an impact do you think it will make in addressing this challenge. The Nigerian Bar Association, is that what you mean? Yes. Oh, well, uh, I, I think the Bar have a lot of contribution to make to the justice system, and they have been making it in some ways. Uh, but like I said, uh, uh, your first question, you said uh, the, 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 ju the judges are not the only ones who are culpable in this. Absolutely, I agree with you. Uh, in most cases, if, if, that's a very big if, because like I told you, I don't have any direct evidence. But if there is corruption and if there is any bribe given and bribe taken, I'm not sure any litigant will approach a judge himself and give him uh, a bribe. It will have to be through the lawyers. Uh, most of the lawyers, <laughs> a friend of mine tweeted about a week ago, uh, he said, good lawyers know the law and great lawyers know the judge. <laughs>